Greetings, one and all. Welcome to uh, yet another edition of Abandoned Hope. Haven't done this uh, fucking show in quite a while. So, uh, you know, I know a lot of you people were missing it. Uh, I got about a million messages from people uh, saying, um, where the fuck's Abandoned Hope? Where the fuck's Abandoned Hope? It's not really, uh, usually when I put these out, they're some of my less viewed videos, but uh, apparently the people who do watch them, pretty big fans of them. So that's good. It's good to know that there it's might not be the most popular shit on my channel, but it's enthusiastically supported by the people who do like it. So that's wonderful. And if you do like this shit, uh, please show your appreciation by giving a fucking thumbs up. All right, let's get right into this bullshit. Saudi Arabia sentences a man to 10 years in jail and 2000 lashes for tweeting that he was an atheist. The hardline Islamic State has a law defining atheist beliefs as terrorism. A court in Saudi Arabia has sentenced a man to 10 years in prison and 2,000 lashes for expressing his atheism on Twitter. The 28-year-old reportedly refused to repent, insisting that he what he wrote reflected his beliefs and that he had the right to express them. Um, so, basically, here we are once again... We have our very good friends, our allies, in fact, in Saudi Arabia, who um, they basically, uh, they don't acknowledge any other religion, and if you have no religion, then they consider that an act of fucking terrorism. And you will get uh, 2,000 lashes and 10 uh, years in jail. I mean, 2,000 fucking lashes, for fuck's sake. I mean, uh, is it even... Is it even possible to survive that many lashes? I mean, fuck. It seems like you'd die of fucking blood loss. Maybe they spread the lashes out. I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I don't know how their criminal justice justice system works in fucking Saudi Arabia. Uh, but once again, I just want to point out uh, how, how incredibly fucking shameful it is that uh, my country, the United States of America a country that purports to be uh, the freest country on God's green earth, is, uh, maintains a relationship with a country like this where um, gay people are executed and atheists are put in jail and lashed. Uh, this is disgusting. I can't believe that um, we consider these people allies and it's, it's not because of any sort of ideological, um, compatibility whatsoever. It's simply because they got oil. We want oil End of story. Um, this is yet another reason also that we should be switching over to, um, renewable energy sources and, uh, not reliant on these, uh, primitive fuckwits over there in the middle East who will, uh, imprison someone for daring to actually um, just honestly look at Islam and say, nope, that's bullshit. Basically, they're, uh, they've, they've legislated that a person's not allowed to be intelligent. A person has to be a moron who believes in fairy tales. And if you're not, you're going to be actively punished for it. Um, so just, just uh, incredibly disgusting and uh, made all the worse by the fact that we actually support this fucking disgusting, evil, reprehensible regime. Uh, here's another story. Hillary Clinton disliked by a record number of Americans, survey finds. Um, while bombastic Republican nominee Donald Trump remains the most unpopular major party presidential nominee in modern U.S. history, Hillary Clinton is not faring much better. A new poll found that she is currently the most disliked she has ever been in her 25 years of public life. Just 41% of Americans have a favorable view of the Democratic presidential nominee, according to the Washington Post ABC News poll released Wednesday. It also found that 56% have an unfavorable view of her, a record high for the poll. Um... Why would anyone like Hillary Clinton... I mean, just on a, not even a policy level, just, just looking at her, listening to her speak. Uh, I know that's, that's shallow, superficial stuff, but uh, her voice is terrible. It's annoying. It's shrill. Um, she, she doesn't know how to emote like a human being. 
She gives off the impression that she really is just a reptilian monster from another dimension that is wearing a ridiculously unconvincing human costume and is gallivanting around faking human emotions in order to convince, like, Hello, fellow humans! Hi, I too am Smile! Cause yay and such! And we're gonna fix America! And I'm gonna be the first female president! Yay! Oh, she's horrible. She's horrible, she's horrible. But, you know, um, that's all superficial bullshit. We could maybe put that aside if, uh, if she actually had principles, if she actually stood for anything. But she very evidently does not stand for anything. Uh, there's not an issue under the sun that she hasn't been on both sides of. Um, and she has proven herself time and time again to be totally for sale, 100% um, for sale to corporate interests. Um, you know, I mean, it, everyone knows this shit. I don't even have to get into the reasons why Hillary's a piece of shit. There's a reason why her fucking approval numbers are in the toilet. Uh, and on top of all that, she's a fucking criminal. I mean, the stuff with the the, the emails, I mean, uh, you know, early on, we all kind of thought it was another Benghazi, just, you know, Republican talking point bullshit. But as time has gone on, we, we've discovered that, no, actually, it's quite serious. She mishandled classified information. She showed terrible fucking judgment, just like she showed terrible fucking judgment when she voted for the war in Iraq. She has terrible judgment overall. She's not a good leader. She is not a good decision maker. She's terrible. She's fucking horrible. So why should anyone like her? The real, the real story here is not the 56% unfavorable view. The real story here is the 41% of Americans that are still, still fucking stupid enough to like this evil bitch. And what's wrong with them? <sighs> Another Clinton story. Clinton touts American exceptionalism in an appeal to Republicans. Uh, Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, speaking to a U.S. veterans group on Wednesday, made an open appeal to Republican and independent voters concerned about rival Donald Trump's national security credentials and his fitness for office. This election shouldn't be about ideology. What? It's not just about differences over policy, Clinton told an American Legion convention in Cincinnati. It truly is about who has the most experience and the temperament to serve as president and the commander-in-chief. Uh, experience doesn't mean jack shit when all of your experience leads one to believe that you're terrible. Yeah, you, you have experience, but you have a long history of fucking failure. You have a long history of selling out. You have a long history of fucking sucking corporate America's fucking cock. No one, you know... It, it's like, oh, you know, a serial killer telling you, like, I have experience in uh, dealing with people. Well, yeah, you do. You kill them all, you son of a bitch. Fuck you. Uh, your experience for you is not a good thing because you don't learn from your experiences. You just make the same stupid fucking mistakes over and over again because you're, you're not concerned with leading people. You're not concerned with being a leader. You're concerned with enriching yourself. You're concerned with expanding your own power. That's it. That's your fucking modus operandi. Uh, as far as I can tell, it always fucking has been. But this idea of you're going to tout fucking American exceptionalism. Let's see what she says. When we say America is exceptional... It means that we recognize America's unique and unparalleled ability to be a force for peace and progress, Clinton told the veterans. When America fails to lead, we leave a vacuum. Bullshit. Bullshit. This American exceptionalism nonsense was nonsense when Republicans were flaunting it, and it's nonsense when Hillary Clinton's dumbass is flaunting it. This idea that America is just inherently good, inherently awesome, and everything we do is just inherently right. Fuck that nonsense, and fuck this idea that America's always got to be the global leader. We've always got to be the leader. We're going to fucking show these other countries what for. Um, what the fuck benefit is that to me? What do I give a shit if, if fucking China is, is fucking, uh, we're, we're calling shots for China or some shit? Or we're calling shots for, for Africa. I mean, I, I don't give a shit because it's not me calling those shots. 
What, what she's basically saying is that, um, it, it's like, like I said, she wants her own fucking power to be expanded. So, of course, she says America needs to be the leader of the world. And, of course, she wants to be the leader of America. So it's basically just her saying, I'm going to be the leader of the fucking world. I'm going to be the leader of the free world. And I'm going to be awesome. Elect me, president of the fucking earth. Maybe you could just, uh, maybe you just crown me empress while you're fucking at it. Uh, because without, without me, the world is just doomed. Bullshit. You're terrible. You're terrible. You've never proven that you're worth a shit. Never. And if you do, if you do get elected and you prove that you're a good president, fine. I'll take it all back. But I doubt it. I fucking doubt it, bitch. Enrique Pena Nieto, I don't know how to pronounce his name, calls conversation with Donald Trump open and constructive. So Donald Trump met with the uh, president of Mexico. They apparently had some sort of open and constructive conversation, but I guess it wasn't too open and constructive because uh, here we are just um, a day or so later, and uh, the, the Trump and the Mexican president are having a fucking Twitter flame war right now. Um, with the president of Mexico being like, we ain't paying for no fucking wall. And Trump being like, they paying for the wall. And, you know, uh, <laughs> I do not think Mexico is going to pay for this fucking wall. I mean, if, if Trump gets elected, um, I would say there's probably like a, a 40% chance that Trump will get elected. And if he is elected, uh, there's about a 50% chance he'll actually build the wall. And there's about a 0% chance that if he does build the wall, Mexico is going to fucking pay for it. Uh, if, 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 Trump gets, if Trump gets elected and builds a wall and Mexico pays for it, I will eat this fucking hat. I will eat this fucking hat off my head. Mark my fucking words. Mark my fucking words, you pieces of degenerate shit. Oh, you know what's what. Here's another uh, little Trump story. Michelle Bachman says, God raised up Trump. <laughs> God raised him up. Every fucking year, these fucking Republicans, they got to fucking, dis- they, they got to fucking uh, pull this God chose our nominee shit. There's always at least one of them. Uh, and I mean, like Glenn Beck, Glenn Beck told us that God chose Ted Cruz. So... Apparently, uh, Donald Trump is more powerful than God because uh, Trump's the one who ended up getting the nomination. But anyway, here's what um, here's what this dumb bitch said. I actually supported Ted Cruz. I thought he was fabulous, but I also see that at the end of the day, God raised up, I believe, Donald Trump, who was going to be the nominee in this election. I don't think God sits things out. He's a sovereign God. Donald Trump became our nominee. So if God doesn't sit these things out, then you would have to believe that Obama was chosen by God. You'd have to believe that every president we've ever had was chosen by God. So how can, how can you ever criticize any president? They're just, that's God's choice. Why do people even show up to fucking vote? You know, why do, you, why do people even show up to vote in elections when at the end of the day, it's not really the people who choose who the president is. It's not even really the corporations or the Washington insiders or any of that shit. Who it really is, is God. God just kind of looks at the two candidates and says, yeah, you know, uh, Trump, Clinton, Clinton, Trump, eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by his toe, if you don't let him go, eeny, meeny, miny. Trump it is! Trump's president. Yeah! Woo! Trump. No. That's not God. God doesn't choose. There is no God. Here's uh, some recent poll numbers. Uh, This is from um, Reuters. Uh, The blue line represents Clinton. The red line represents Trump. Uh, You notice that Trump was uh, ahead back on... um, What day was this? This is July 22nd. And then uh, pretty much after that... Clinton's been ahead, and now recently, I mean, Clinton is still ahead, but uh, the gap is closed. Uh, It looks like they're neck and neck right now, at least in the Reuters poll. I think that Clinton is still leading Trump by about five points nationally. Um, I'm really curious to see if Trump can close the poll gap in uh, the forthcoming debates. Uh, Now, some people have said uh, the polls are rigged. That's bullshit. The polls are not. There's too many polls to rig. You know, you can maybe rig a few of the polls. You're not gonna be able to rig all the polls. Um, even Breitbart, who they have people in the Trump campaign for fuck's sake, 
Uh, even their poll showed Hillary Clinton ahead. So, eh. But um, I have heard another theory, though, about these polls that I think might be a little bit more credible. They say that a lot of people who support Trump might be kind of embarrassed that they support Trump. They talked about, they, they compared it to like the Nielsen scanners, you know, the, the, the Nielsen families. They find that, um, you know, they, they select families to have the little box and, you know, they, they look at what they watch and stuff and that's how ratings are decided and shit. They just, you know, put it in random households and shit. But um, a lot of times they, they just, they actually ignore the first like three or four months of data from a new household because when people know they're being watched, they try to seem a little bit more highfalutin than they actually are. It's like, no, we're not watching Keeping Up with the Kardashians. We're watching documentaries on PBS. So the first three months they try to, oh, they try to fool the Nielsen people because they're, you know, ashamed of their actual tastes. So they lie. They lie, basically. They put on fucking PBS and shit and, and uh, you know, try to seem like they're, they're some highfalutin, educated motherfuckers. Uh, but then, you know, uh, later on, they're like, fuck it, you know, we can't keep up this facade anymore. So maybe it's the same thing with the, the Clinton-Trump polls. There's people who they like Trump better. But they know there's kind of a stigma attached to liking Trump, so they lie. That could be the case. That could be true. That could be true. I don't know if it is true, but it seems like it could be true. So, uh, yeah, we're going to talk about Colin Kaepernick now. This is a, an article from The Intercept. I don't really know uh, this publication. This is an article that says, Colin Kaepernick is writer than you know. The national anthem is a celebration of slavery. Uh, let's see. Almost no one seems to be aware that even in the if the U.S. were a perfect country today, it would be bizarre to expect African-American players to stand for the Star-Spangled Banner. Why? Because it literally celebrates the murder of African-Americans. Few people know this because we only ever sing the first verse, but read the end of the third verse and you'll see why the Star-Spangled Banner is not just a musical atrocity. It's an intellectual and moral one, too. No refuge could save the hireling and slave from the terror of flight or the gloom of the grave. And the star-spangled banner in triumph doth wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Um, so I, I have to agree with this guy that the star-spangled banner is a musical abomination, and I honestly despise the fucking song. Uh, if I... If I ever hear the national anthem again, which I know I will, it'll be too fucking soon. But this whiny shit about... It's about slaves, and they killed slaves, and wah. Yeah, okay. Whatever. It was a different time. Uh, you know, I'm, there's, there's lots of fucking... You know, the, the old nursery rhyme, um, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posy, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. That's about the fucking bubonic plague, for fuck's sake. You know, it's, it's about fucking a horrible disease, but it's just a little children's rhyme, and it's cute. Okay? There's a lot of fucking uh, fairy tales and old stories and, and old songs and shit that have meanings that by today's PC standards are really bad and really offensive. But you know what? Put them in the context of the time they fucking came from, okay? Uh, no one should have a problem standing from the na for the national anthem for those reasons, all right? No one should care about, oh, this song is about some, some bad stuff, because that's not what, it, no one, like you said, no one even knows that meaning, no one gives a fuck about that shit, all right, the national anthem is basically just um, sucking America's dick, America's great, America's great, America's great, America's great, it's basically just that same American exceptionalism bullshit, Hillary, Hillary was spouting. Uh, no, one, no one even pays attention to the fucking words. Dawn's early light. Fucking flag was still there. Bombs bursting in air. Fucking all that shit. You know, whatever. For the land of the free and the home of the brave. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's just, it's just fucking feel-good nonsense at this point. 
No one gives a fuck about its meaning. No one cares about where it came from or what its original intent was because that shit's long dead and past. Doesn't matter anymore. D it probably never did. Probably never fucking did. Probably never fucking did. You know, uh... Colin Kaepernick's national anthem protest has reportedly enraged NFL executives to the point where his career could be over. Um, well, I mean, considering how bad he's played the last couple seasons, I think his career probably is was winding down anyway before this. In fact, he probably saw that and decided to do this kind of publicity stunt bullshit. Um... Blah, 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 blah. Let's see. Bleacher reports, Mike Freeman reports that he spoke to seven front office executives about Kaepernick and they all the same reaction to Kaepernick's stance. He won't be allowed near their teams. While Freeman says they are likely front offices, there are likely front offices that respect Kaepernick's protest. They are statistically outnumbered. The vitriolic reaction to Kaepernick may be such that his days in the NFL are numbered. There could be some executives who have no issue with Kaepernick, but I doubt there are many, Freeman wrote. Each executive said he believes Kaepernick will likely get released by the 49ers and never play in the NFL again. I would not be surprised. Uh, here's another story about the, uh, the execs uh, hating Kaepernick. This one I like even more because they talk about how um, one executive said he hadn't seen this much collective dislike among front office members regarding a player since Ray Carruth. Remember Ray Carruth? He's still in prison for the plot to murder his pregnant girlfriend. So, literally, deciding not to stand for the national anthem, uh, in some people's minds, that is on, like, the same level as, like, you plotted to murder your pregnant girlfriend. Um, that's ridiculous. That is literally fucking ridiculous. I mean, I don't care. Uh, you, you agree with Kaepernick. You don't agree with Kaepernick. You think he's doing it for uh, ideologically pure reasons, or you think he's doing it just to aggrandize himself. Whatever your fucking opinion is, uh, any interpretation of this situation where what he has done is tantamount with fucking uh, attempted murder is ridiculous. If that's honestly how you feel, then you're a moron. You're a detriment to the human race. You should um, you should be killed. Sorry. You, uh, the attempt, the person that we should attempt to murder is you. We need to let Ray Carruth go and and set him, set him to the task of murdering these stupid fucks. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness! I got one more uh, Colin Kaepernick story. This is Colin Kaepernick's birth mom shames him on Twitter for uh, refusal to stand in the national anthem. So she says. Um, there's ways to make change without disrespecting and bringing shame to the very country and family who afforded you so many blessings. The path less traveled doesn't need to be one of destruction. Uh, and then uh, when people criticized her for abandoning her son uh, and giving him up for adoption, uh, the, you know, she says, love people who wallow in their ignorance and sit on social media in their glass houses throwing stones. Well, I mean, you're the one who is using social media to criticize your fucking son, who we don't even know what kind of relationship they have, if any at all. But um, I'm presuming that she probably could have called him up and said this to him. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking that she probably did not need to take to social media to blast him. Um, you know, whatever. Uh, I thought it was kind of funny. That's about the only reason. I really don't have much to say about it. Whoa, what happened? What happened? Oh, well. Uh, this is interesting. Teen says she'll fail high school if trans students use her locker room. A Pennsylvania student has said she won't pass high school if she's required to use locker rooms al alongside peers who happen to identify as transgender. Sigourney Coyle, who is starting her freshman year at Emos High School in Emos, Pennsylvania, ugh, told the East Penn School Board at an August 22nd meeting that she'd uh, sat out her middle school gym class following the Obama administration's directive on transgender issues. Issued in May, the directive included language requiring public schools to allow trans students to use restrooms in public facilities that corresponded with their gender identity or risk losing federal funding. 
I am a woman and I identify as a woman and you can't make me change in front of someone who I don't identify with who is physically male, Coyle said at the meeting according to video posted to Facebook by her mother, Erin. Jim requires us to participate uh, to pass high school and if I don't change, I am not allowed to participate to pass high school and if I don't change, I am not allowed to participate. She continued in the clip, which can be found below. So my options are to let myself be discriminated against or fail Jim for not participating and not pass through high school, which would jeopardize my future. Um, I don't understand this shit whatsoever. Um, you know, I didn't like changing in gym in front of other fucking guys. Didn't like it one fucking bit. Um, I still fucking did it because that's what was fucking required of me. Um, if there had been a fucking trans dude there that would have been uh no different i in fact i wouldn't be embarrassed um i wouldn't be more embarrassed because i'm changing in front of the trans dude if anything i would feel bad for the trans dude because that would be pretty bad for them like that seems like they'd be the ones miserable in that situation like all eyes would be upon them you know i feel like it'd probably be the same if a trans girl uh, used the girls' locker room. Um, like, whatever happened to just minding your own fucking business, though? Like, if you're in the locker room, you're not generally, like, looking around everywhere, fucking trying to see other people changing, you know? Even if you are, you're doing it, like, in a very discreet way, you know? <laughs> so, I don't I don't get it. Like, um, it, it seems to me like maybe just, like, maybe the whole idea of um, the, these open locker rooms, like maybe that, that idea's time has come in general. Maybe it's time to just give people their own little stalls that they can fucking um, dress and undress in or at least give people the option, you know, for people who, who you know, are fat, you know, or ugly or, uh, you know, have some sort of reason to be embarrassed by their body. Maybe give them a fucking option to go off and have some more privacy if that's what they tr they want. Um, but as far as specifically worrying about trans people um, changing in the same locker room as you, just weird. I don't get it. I don't understand it as a concern. I just don't. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Uh, Facebook changes trending topics questioned after uh, blunder. <laughs> I love this story. Facebook's changes to its trending topic sections are being questioned after it featured a false report about Fox News anchor Megyn Kelly. That's not the interesting part. Blah, blah, blah. Fuck Megyn Kelly. Another tra topic trending was hashtag McChicken, which took users to a stories about a video of a man using a McDonald's sandwich in a sex act. And I'm sure most of you guys have seen this. If you haven't, I'll describe it for you. A black man with a huge cock basically uh, fucked a McChicken sandwich. I mean, um, I don't even know if you could say he fucked the sandwich because his dick was so spilling out of it that um, I'd, I'd have to say he was more just using it to jerk off with. Which I don't get. Is Is that like... Is it an especially pleasant feeling to feel a chicken sandwich moving up and down your fucking shaft? Is that like an ideal sort of texture? Uh, you know, there's plenty of things that I think would probably be more comfortable to, to fucking stick your dick in or to wrap around your fucking cock as you jerk off. McChicken, really? I mean, it would never fucking occur to me. It would never fucking occur to me to fuck a McChicken, but maybe that's why it was a trending topic. Maybe that's maybe that's what got the fucking the wheels turning. But yeah, I got I kind of do feel bad for the people who aren't um, who aren't uh, similarly interested in in weird random shit like that. You know, someone who's just like, "Oh, McChicken is trending." I wonder if their their McDonald's is doing a special promotion or something. Let me click on that. Oh my god, no. Oh, it's so wonderful. I love this planet sometimes, man. Oh, my God. I, I love the fact that some dude fucked a McChicken. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It's it's probably one of the greatest things. Um, I just love the fact that, that, that... And I especially love the fact that Facebook was complicit in sending people to watch... <laughs> to watch this video of a guy just fucking a McChicken. Oh. Oh, goodness. Goodness gracious me. 
Wonderful. Just wonderful. Here's something that's not wonderful. Social justice warriors push teen to suicide. Uh, the blah, 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 blah. That's nothing to do with it. Um, blah, 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 blah. All right, here we go. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Letter to kill herself. An official inquest has heard that a teenage girl named Phoebe Conup in the United Kingdom posted a photoshopped image of herself with darkened skin wearing a headscarf on Instagram. She shared the image with friends and jokingly suggested that she'd only get the approval of the parents of the boy she was interested in, who is of South Asian descent, if she resembled the edited photograph. So basically, she was mocking the racism of this South, of these South Asian parents who didn't want their son dating a fucking white girl. So they're, actu- they're, they're the actual fucking racist here. And unfortunately for her, the image was shared outside her private circle of friends and Conup feared a backlash that would lead to her being branded a racist and subsequently obsequi- uh, ob- ostracized. So Phoebe Conup, age 16, took her own life. Uh, So basically, because she was so afraid of these fanatical social justice ass fuckers calling her racist and ruining her reputation, she was so fucking scared of that that she ended up killing herself. Um, Now, I don't I mean, I'm not you can't lay all the blame for this at the so on the social justice warriors. I mean, she did make a decision to fucking kill herself um, all because she was afraid of what other people would think. So that's silly um, in and of itself, and the social justice warriors can't be blamed for that. But uh, have they created an atmosphere where people are super afraid of saying the wrong thing, doing the wrong thing, making the wrong joke? Yes, they have. They absolutely have. Uh, I think people like Steve Shives are responsible for what happened to this girl um, because that mentality is is spreading and uh you know and we all know that ultimately whatever the position progressives take is ultimately going to be what society embraces so we know that at some point social justice warrior bullshit is going to take over the idea that conservatism is going to rally and and fucking fight against these forces is ludicrous it's never happened in the past it's not going to happen now Uh, The only time that conservatism ever kind of gets a resurgence is if there's a big terrorist attack or some huge disaster and people are like, oh, we we need to hearken back to the old ways. So, I mean, failing that, the social justice warriors are going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. We've already seen it. We've seen that their sensibilities are dominating Twitter, dominating Facebook, starting to dominate YouTube. Um... And people with, uh, with other opinions are being marginalized. People on the right, on the traditional right, are being marginalized. People on the so-called alt-right are being marginalized. And liberals, like myself, who just don't buy into the whole PC language police bullshit, uh, we're being ostracized. We're being marginalized. Um, and uh, this, is, this is just how, this is how that, that sort of worldview affects someone who's 16 years old and not yet emotionally stable, not yet, uh, not yet a fully developed adult human being capable of rationally looking at this and saying, well, it really doesn't matter what other people think. Um, you know, she's still impressionable. She's still ultra sensitive to what her peers think of her. And when you create this atmosphere of we're the social justice warriors and we're going to we're going to make the world better by forcing everyone to talk like us and think like us and act like us. And anyone who shows even the slightest bit of deviation from what we think is a horrible, sexist, racist, misogynist, uh, rape supporting, uh, et cetera, et cetera. They're bad. They're evil. They're Hitler reincarnated, et cetera. And this girl, knowing that that was inevitably going to happen to her, um, decided that she'd rather just kill herself than fucking deal with it. So did they create this fucking horrible atmosphere? Yes, they did. So they deserve to be held accountable for that. But do I hold them directly accountable for her suicide? No, of course not. She's directly accountable for her suicide. So a uh, pro-charter school group is shelling out $100,000 to prove John Oliver wrong. 
Uh, ever since comedian John Oliver attacked charter schools in a Last Week Tonight segment earlier this month, advocacy groups, both for and against the educational institutions, have been fired up. The Center for Educational Reform is one of the groups that feels like the segment misrepresented charter schools. This week, the nonprofit decided to put its money where its mouth is by announcing a Hey John Oliver, Back Off My Charter School video contest with a $100,000 prize. Um, so why are charter schools a bad thing? Well, charter schools are a bad thing because what they essentially are is private schools funded with public money. Um, yeah, that doesn't even make sense. So they're schools that basically they get to get our tax dollars, but they, they're not beholden to these educational standards that are implemented in public schools, uh, which means that they can teach absolute nonsense. Uh, in, in states like Louisiana, um, government money is going towards schools that teach creationism. So basically we have government money it's going to uh, parents in the form of education vouchers. And then those parents are using that money that came from taxpayers, that came from the government, to enroll their kids in schools that teach them that the universe is 6,000 years old and there was a talking snake and a fucking magic tree and, uh, you know, and all the bad things in the world are because there's a big red guy with horns, you know, pitchfork going ha 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 down fucking in the center of the earth or wherever the fuck. So, uh, yeah, that can, it can be problematic. It can be problematic. I know that SJWs have ruined the word problematic, but really it can be problematic. Uh, this is, this is a story. Here's a SJW story. Uh, video games allow characters more varied sexual identities. Wow. Thanks. Finally, in the popular simulation game, The Sims, players have long been able to create male and female characters, but only up to a point. That changed this year. In May, Electronic Arts, the publisher of The Sims, released a patch for the game that removed all gender barriers, freeing players to create virtual characters with any physical attribute. For Blair Durkee, the shift was significant. The day after the patch was introduced, Ms. Durkee, a student at Clemson University in South Carolina, logged into The Sims and started designing her first transgender character. She named the character Amber, gave her a deep voice and broad shoulders, and made her infertile, which is really the only attribute that all trans people have in common, uh, said Ms. Durkee. I'm sorry. So basically, The Sims is now allowing you to create trans people, and apparently this is worth an article. Apparently this is some giant leap forward for mankind. Um, you know, I don't give a shit. I really don't care. I mean, like, there have been times in video games where I'm trying to customize a character, and I want to make it look like me, and I try to make it as fat as me, but the video game won't even let it make a character that fat. You know, it's like... Oh, you know, the, the, you can only make them like a little chubby, maybe, you know? Um, so I, you know, I don't fucking, I don't fucking cry in my fucking hands. Oh, discrimination. Oh, you know, I don't care. And, uh, you know, I bet you that if anything, that if they, if they released a fucking patch for, you know, I don't know, Fallout or something where it's like, yeah, now you can be as fat as you want to be. You could be a fucking 850-pound fucking guy just rolling rolling around the fucking wasteland, you know? Uh, I, guess, I guess, you know, with the New York Times published an article about how that was uh, some giant leap forward for social progress. Maybe they would. Maybe they fucking would. I don't know. If they would, they're, they're even dumber than I think, which is pretty hard. So here's a video about a fucking real asshole. Uh, ex-Marine allegedly kills Ohio woman after both survived car crash. Uh, a man allegedly shot and killed a woman after the two survived a car collision in the Cleveland suburb of Salon, Ohio. Deborah Pearl, 53, was on her way to work at a local diner on Saturday morning when a Jeep ran a red light and hit her Ford Taurus, Cleveland.com reported. The crash pushed Pearl's car into the intersection and made the Jeep flip over several times. When Pearl exited her car... She put her hands in the air, a witness told the local news outlet. Then the driver of the Jeep, 29-year-old Matthew Desha, allegedly shot and killed Pearl with a rifle, according to reports. A witness who called 911 reported hearing about a dozen shots fired, first randomly, then at Pearl. 
In a recording obtained by WEWS, a woman at the scene said she was walking back and forth pacing when police arrived on the scene. Pearl was on the ground bleeding. Cops arrested Desha, who was close by the scene. Pearl was pronounced dead at University Hospital's uh, Bedford, Bedford's Medical Center shortly after. So this guy was a Marine, and this woman was, uh, I guess she was probably a waitress or a hostess at a fucking diner. And uh, he ran a red light, smashed into her car. Uh, she gets out. Uh, he gets out too. He fucking shoots her, blows her away. Uh, you know, she's a mother of three, so basically her kids don't have a fucking mom anymore. And uh, this guy was some ex-Marine, and of course all of his friends are now saying, oh, he had PTSD. He had PTSD, you guys, so it's okay. Um, now, I'm not one of these throw-the-book-at-him type of motherfuckers. I don't really believe in uh, the death penalty. I don't really believe in life sentences for anybody but the most egregious criminals. I'm talking like serial killers, uh, serial violent rapists, um, uh, people who, you know, b sell military secrets to fucking enemies or, or something like that, you know, active traitors, um, you know, stuff like that. Uh, they can, they can go to jail for life, whatever, you know, people who are just like the most utterly loathsome motherfuckers on earth, give them jail time. But, uh, you know, for, for an act of murder like this, you know, I say, uh, 10 to 20 years appropriate as a punishment. Um, you know, if this guy indeed suffers from PTSD, maybe, maybe eight years instead of 10, but, uh, hopefully this guy will actually be punished, um, because this is a ridiculous, you know, uh, to first of all, be the cause of an accident and then shoot the other driver who is a mother of three. What the fuck? What the fuck? And, you know, he did it with, um, training given to him by our fucking military too. You know, the reason he had a gun and was a good shot and all that was because he was a Marine. And if he really had PTSD, then, um, you know, why was he not being properly treated for it? I think we all know the answer to that because the VA fucking sucks dick. So, I, I mean, I don't know. Horrible shit. Uh, speaking of another pointless death, but this one's hard to care much about. North Korea executes vice premier for disrespect. Uh, North Korea has executed a vice premier for showing disrespect during a meeting presided over by leader Kim Jong-un, South Korea said Wednesday after reports that he fell asleep. <laughs> so this guy was in a meeting with Kim Jong-un. Uh, he starts to get a little sleepy, like, oh, shit. Uh. And, of course, Kim Jong-un's like, kill that man, you know? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I, I love that. Uh, he dozed off in a meeting. He pissed Kim Jong-un off. Uh, he was arrested on site and intensively questioned by state security. What is he questioned about? What, do you, what is there to question? Do, do you think that him falling asleep was part of some elaborate plot or something? You got to uncover the fucking secret? Whatever, you know. Uh, if I was that guy, I'd have, I'd have claimed narcolepsy. Like, oh, it's a medical condition. Maybe they won't kill you. Yeah, right. They're going to kill you. So basically, uh, you know, this guy's a piece of shit, Kim Jong-un. This entire country is just a piece of shit. Why do we, why do we allow these motherfuckers to keep uh, existing? Why do we allow these motherfuckers to um, keep working on their nuclear arsenal? Why do we allow uh, China, who is economically dependent on the U.S., to continue to send goods and food into fucking North Korea and prop it up and keep it alive? We should tell China, we're not doing business with you until you stop doing business with fucking North Korea. Get out of here. No one wants this. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that? You know, and this is the kind of thing that you even suggest it and people are like, no, no, too aggressive, too aggressive. Fuck you. Do it. It's time to fucking kill this country. It's time to kill this country. It's time to kill Saudi Arabia. It's time to kill ISIS. It's time to get rid of all the shit. All the despots and dictators all around the world. It's time to just pfft, wipe them all out. We got the fucking technology. Let's do it before they start building up nuclear fucking arsenals. What the fuck? 
What the fuck is this? This page has become unresponsive. Is North Korea fucking hijacking my internet connection because they know I'm talking shit about them? Get out of here. Just fuck off. No one wants you. We'll move on to the next story. Aurora Massacre survivors end up owing theaters $700,000 after suing. So basically some survivors, they tried to sue Cinemark, which, come on, was it, was it Cinemark's fault? Was it fucking Cinemark's fault? Come on. I mean, a gunman can go into any fucking place at any fucking time and blow your ass the fuck away. It's not the fault of the place because they didn't protect you enough. Okay? I could go into any fucking store and blow some people away. Any fucking buddy could. Anyone who, anyone in America, anyone in America could go fucking get a gun somewhere. You could buy one in a fucking parking lot. You can go to any fucking building you want anywhere at any time and go shoot a bunch of people. As long as there's people there, you go to the mall, you go to the grocery store, you go to the fucking, uh, the, the baseball park, you go to a fucking bar, you can go to a church. There's no, no one can fucking protect you, okay? No one can fucking save you if someone decides that they're going to fucking bust in with a gun and start shooting people. The only thing that's going to fucking save your ass is luck. So I don't believe that, you know, you should sue Cinemark. I don't believe that they fucking caused this, all right? But at the same time, you know, if you do try to sue Cinemark, you, it's definitely obscene to say that the victims should end up owing the fucking movie theater money. You know, in my mind, if you lose the lawsuit, it, you know, no one owes anyone anything, okay? You don't owe fucking Cinemark $700,000 for its legal fees or whatever the fuck. That's absurd. That's ridiculous. That shouldn't be the case. We got one more thing left here. Uh, this is an interesting thing. You know, I know everyone is uh, obsessed with the whole Black Lives Matter shit. Let me, uh, let me move this out a little because you can't quite see it the way that my screen is set up. So this is a, a list of the murder of blacks and whites in the U.S. in 2013, which I'm assuming is probably the year that it was easiest to get records for. Uh, this is murders per million members of the murderer's race. Murders per million members of the murderer's race. So whites killed by blacks, it was 9.83. 9.83. Uh, so, so for every million white people, 9.83 were murdered by black people, which pretty much is statistically insignificant. Um, whites killed by whites, a little higher than whites killed by blacks, like 10.22. Blacks killed by blacks, biggest number here by far, 53. That's still just, that's still 53 out of a fucking million though. You know, that's one thing, like, when you talk about how disproportionately high the black crime rate is, you have to realize that, yeah, it's disproportionately high, uh, but at least, in thing, at least in terms of things like murder, it's still not statistically that significant. Not many people of any race are just wantonly murdering people in the U.S., uh, despite what some of the media would have you believe. But the most incredible thing here is the very low number of blacks killed by whites. For every million people, there's not even one black person killed by white people. There's only 0.77. So, that's incredible. And the, you see, the, I'm sure you've already read this caption on the screen, but if, in case you're just listening to this, there's an arrow pointing to that particular statistic saying, this is what Black Lives Matter is protesting. I saw this graphic, I immediately fell in love with it because it just so wonderfully and succinctly explains how ludicrous the Black Lives Matter movement actually fucking is. Because if they, uh, if they actually thought that Black Lives Matter, they would be protesting the blacks killed by blacks as well as the blacks killed by whites, as well as the blacks killed by police. Um, they would be protesting... Um, They'd be protesting when whites kill blacks, too, because they'd be saying, oh, well, that gives us a bad reputation. And I, I also think they should probably protest when whites are killed by whites. I don't know. Maybe they can, I don't know how, why exactly they would, but I, I still think you should. I think you should condemn murder in general. Just a crazy notion in my head. But anyway, um, I hope that um, I've given you reason to abandon hope. I know that's kind of uh, paradoxical, oxymoronic shit. 
Um, if you have any suggestions for butt of the day, which you see down there, if you have any suggestions for butt of the day, you can always send those to me on Twitter. If you don't have a Twitter, you can send them to the Amazing Atheist official Facebook, or you can submit them to my Tumblr. Um, or, uh, yeah, I guess those are pretty much the three ways you can do it. So if you have a suggestion for butt of the day, that's how you can fucking send me butts that you think would be good. And, uh, also it's just my way of tricking you into sending me butts because I like butts. So thank you guys for watching and, uh, yes, till next time. Peace the fuck out, bitch.